Hello everyone. I've uh, I've left my lair and I'm out in my domain. Walking the the big dog today. If you can see him over there. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to learn the Constitution. I mean, here we are out in beautiful Nevada, part of the United States, and I really do love the United States. I get frustrated with some of the states sometimes, but overall, I really like the United States. And so I thought, you know what, as a patriot, we all ought to know the Constitution. And as a person who teaches a history of the U.S. and Nevada Constitutions, um, I kind of know the Constitution and know how to sort of memorize it. And so I thought, I'm going to share that with you. So really, <clears throat> it's actually pretty easy if you want to memorize the Constitution. Um, there's three big things that you need to do. Um, number one is break it down. So there's three big parts to the Constitution that we could talk about. There's the Articles, and the Bill of Rights, and then the rest of the amendments. And if you could take them in those chunks, it's actually a lot easier to memorize the whole Constitution. And then the other thing that you can do to uh, help out is to use mnemonic devices and acronyms and things like that. And it doesn't matter if they're weird. Um, I mean, I actually think that weird mnemonic devices help better because... I don't know if you've noticed this, but uh, I'll remember the weirdest things. Like, I don't know a whole lot of German, but I always remember Elektrischebedien Schuschescheiben. And honestly, I've met some Germans who don't know what that means, so it's one of those weird things, but uh, I remember it. So if you think of a, a mnemonic device and it's weird, I think that actually sticks out in your mind and helps you out. I'm sorry, just look at these mountains. I like the paw rocks, they're beautiful. Anyway, so if you, uh, if you try to use those mnemonic devices, they'll help out. And uh, what was the third thing that you're supposed to do? Uh, I don't know, anyway. Oh, I thought there were three things. Oh, maybe I'll think of it. So. If you just do those two things, <laughs> then uh, you should be well on your way to uh, memorizing the whole Constitution, right? So if you take the first part, that's the, uh, the articles of the Constitution. And by the way, just so you know, I don't think you should memorize it word for word. I think if you know the basics of it, that's good enough for your average citizen. Unless you're going to be a lawyer or something like that, and you're going to be dealing with constitutional law. Maybe you should know it word for word, but uh, I think having the basics and understanding where to find things in the Constitution is uh, pretty good. So if you look at the articles and you take the first letter of the basics of the articles, you'll get Lejsafr. L-E-J-S-A-F-R. And so if you know Lejsafr, then you should be able to get the Legislative, Executive, Judicial, uh, States' Rights, Amendments, Federal Rights, and Ratification, Legislature. And if you can remember those, then you can go deeper, right? I mean, the big thing is, is don't complicate it too much. If you can remember a little bit, and you can usually remember a lot, so you know a few little things about it, you can use those few things to jog your memory for the big thing. So the... Article 1 deals with the legislative branch, right? So that's going to entail all sorts of things with the House of Representatives, the Senate, how laws are passed, all that kind of business, right? Maybe you can remember that kind of stuff. And is that the whole first article? No. Um, but uh, but if you've got that, you've got that. So why do I say ledge sapphire? It's the same reason you, you, uh, you know, probably remember uh, PEMDAS, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, or, uh, I read this book twice with my kids about the solar system, and it said, uh, Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mickles just saved up 999 nickels. And if you can remember that, 
then you can remember all of the planets in the solar system in the order they come in, right? So Mallory, Mercury, Valerie, Venus, so on and so forth. Anyway, so Ledge Saffir, come up with a good uh, little acronym or something like uh, for that. One of my students one time came up with a weird one, and I think the weird ones are good. She said, uh, let's eat jaguar soup and flamingo rolls. And I don't know what kind of a restaurant she's going to, but <laughs> it's just weird enough and exotic enough where if you can remember, let's eat jaguar soup and flamingo rolls, you'll get le ledge saffir. And if you can remember that each one of those letters is for legislative, executive, judicial, so on and so forth, then you're good. And then there, there you go. You've got the seven articles. Oh, and don't forget the preamble, too. The preamble's important. Sets up the Constitution, all that kind of stuff. And then, there you go. You just, you just, uh, you know, you study that for like ten minutes, and you'll have the, uh, you'll have all of the articles of the Constitution memorized. And then, if you really want, you can get into the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is, uh, some of them are really easy, and some of them are not quite so easy. I don't have a selfie stick, so my hand's getting tired. Um, but if you think about it, the, uh, the First Amendment is one that should be pretty easy. Um, there's five parts to it. So if you want, you can create another acronym for that, right? Um, so it's uh, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, uh, freedom of petition. So, you got those five, what is that? So, R-S-P-A-P, R-S-P. You know that Aretha Franklin song? Uh, Aretha Franklin, anyway, that song that that woman sings. Um, Aretha Franklin, there we go, I got it. Uh, instead of R-E-S-P-E-C-T, why don't I say R-S-P-A-P, find out what it means. I don't know, anyway, come up with some stupid thing like that, but there you go. Another little thing you can use. So, And again, that First Amendment is uh, one of the more important ones. So know that one at the very least. And the Second Amendment's easy. I mean, I don't know. If you don't know the Second Amendment, maybe you've been living on Mars in a cave under a rock. Um, or in Canada. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Second Amendment, right to bear arms. I don't know. There's probably some pretty easy ways to figure that one out if you have a hard time memorizing the right to bear arms. Um, it's the Second Amendment, you have two arms and you're going to bear them. <sighs> Something like that, I don't know. Um, the uh, Third Amendment I always thought was an easy one because it's uh, no quartering of soldiers in your home. And so, if you think about it, imagine yourself having a lovely romantic dinner with your, uh, your beautiful spouse and you're staring lovingly into each other's eyes. And all of a sudden you hear the soldier who's uh, quartered in your house say, Pass the mustard! He's the third wheel, right? You ever had that where you go on a date and you're like talking about, you know, the movie you're going to go see with your, uh, with your uh, girlfriend and, and all of a sudden he's like, I love that movie, I'll go. And you're like, oh, cool. So yeah, Third Amendment, Third Wheel, no quartering of soldiers in your home. And there's more to it, but there's that. And that uh, gets us to the Fourth Amendment. And a lot of my students start to have problems with the rest of the Bill of Rights. Um, I don't think they need to. I think uh, they're pretty easy. So I always think of the Fourth Amendment as the Walmart Amendment. And you might be asking yourself, well... What the heck does Walmart have to do? And Walmart didn't exist when they uh, wrote that amendment, right? Um, and, uh, well, essentially, the Walmart amendment is, uh, is dealing with uh, search and seizure, that kind of business, right? And I don't know if this happens at your Walmart, but in my Walmart, the, uh, there's usually a person standing at the exit who asks to check your receipt. And uh, my response to that is always, no thank you. Um, I say no thank you, and I'm very polite about it too, because there's another thing about this, but here's the thing. They're checking to make sure that you've, uh, that you've marked up all of, or you've uh, checked out all your stuff, because, you know, it's Walmart now, they don't, they don't actually, um, 
they don't actually do your uh, your checking for you. You have to do the self checkout, and so they want to make sure that you have everything. You didn't steal anything, and you know they're probably being nice, and uh, they'll say, you know, oh. Maybe you forgot something in the bottom of your basket or something like that, you know, but there you go. Well, here's the thing. Unless they have a warrant issued by a judge and carried by a police officer, they're not legally allowed to demand to search your property. So whenever they say, may I see a receipt? I always say, no, thank you. And then that's that. And if they want, if they demand so, they can accuse me of shoplifting they can call the police. The police can then get a uh, search warrant from a judge and they can come and search my stuff. Um, <laughs> and of course, they're not going to do that, which is nice. But I will say this. Uh, don't be a jerk about it at Walmart. Like, don't say, well, my Fourth Amendment rights say that I don't have to do this and you're going to go to hell. <sighs> be nice to the people. I mean, one, they have to work at Walmart, so give them a break. And two, um, Walmart can say, well, you're not allowed to be on our property then, uh, and you can uh, no longer shop at our store. And if you can't shop at Walmart, well, crap, where the heck are you going to shop? So anyway, there you go. Fourth Amendment, no unlawful search and seizure. Um, and of course, is there more to it? Yes. But you can look that up now that you know the basics of it, and you know you can go a little further. The Fifth Amendment... I guess a lot of people say, uh, a lot of people, uh, well, there's so much to the Fifth Amendment, actually. There's a whole bunch that we could go into. A lot of people say, I plead the Fifth. What that means is you don't have to incriminate yourself, so you don't have to testify if it's going to actually uh, uh, incriminate you. I think um, I would say due process. Uh, so for the Fifth Amendment, the uh, the... The police have to follow the law in order to enforce the law. And on that one, my mnemonic device, so the Fourth Amendment was the Walmart uh, Amendment. On my, uh, on the Fifth Amendment, I always remember that because I think of uh, five over. So the uh, police have to follow the law in order to enforce the law, right? They have to do a follow the due process and all this. Um, and uh, I always think about driving the speed limit and driving five over. And if I'm speeding, if I'm going more than five over, the police are going to pull me over. And I always wonder. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a lawyer here, and I, I, I'm sure there's a good le re legal reason why they can do this. But uh, how come the police can break the speeding law in order to catch you if you're speeding? There's probably a really good reason why. But there you go. The Fifth Amendment, five over, due process. I don't know if that helps you, but hopefully it does. And then that gets into the Sixth and the Seventh Amendments. And these ones, actually my, my students are vexed by these uh, often. And it's because they're very similar. So the Sixth Amendment guarantees you the right to a fair and tre speedy trial. I don't know how do you actually do that one. Again, come up with a good mnemonic device for that, right? So six gone in 60 seconds is fast, right? So maybe you could do that, I don't know, something like that. And then the Seventh Amendment, that one guarantees you the right to a jury trial in civil cases. Um, again, I just remember those. And if you've got mnemonic devices for the other ones, maybe you can just remember these, I don't know. But uh, come up with one that works for you. And I'll give you a good example of one that works for me, for the Eighth Amendment. And the Eighth Amendment is uh, no cruel and unusual punishment. And so for the Eighth Amendment, I always think of a really, really dark torture chamber. And there's a big torturer. And uh, before him, he's got eight different torture devices. And on his belly, he's got a big giant tattoo of the number eight. Of course, he's not wearing a shirt. He's wearing a hood, not a shirt. It's a hood with a mask, not like my hood. And uh, there you go. So I remember the Eighth Amendment as no cruel and unusual punishment because the eight on the torturer's belly and the eight torture devices. And I get that clear picture in my head. So if you can remember that, then you can remember Eighth Amendment, no cruel and unusual punishment, no excessive bails and fines, things like that, right? Um, and again, there's more to it.
and that's okay. And then the 9th and the 10th, actually the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, everybody gets screwed up on, but let's deal with just the Bill of Rights. So the 9th and the 10th, um, I don't know. These ones are kind of like, I guess they're, they're good and they get used a lot, but, uh, the Ninth Amendment essentially says that, you know, you have rights that aren't in the Constitution. Which is kind of nice, because if those were the only rights you possessed in the Constitution, then, uh, um, well, I'm sure you'd be missing out on something. And then the Tenth Amendment simply says that uh, anything that isn't specifically assigned to the federal government uh, belongs to the states. So any law or anything like that, or any privilege or right or something like that, that they didn't specifically say, hey, this is the federal government stuff, belongs to the states. And again, I just kind of remember those. Um, I don't know, you'll have to, I guess if you need a mnemonic device, come up with one. Um, so, I don't know, nine. That's no in German, so maybe you can think of... Uh, no, you have more rights or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So those are the Bill of Rights. So if you can remember that, you're good. So there you go. So now you hopefully can study the, the Bill of Rights um, after you've got the uh, articles done, which means you're, you're like more than halfway there. You only got, uh, only got 17 more things to, uh, to memorize there. And again, the rest of the, bill, uh, the, rest of the amendments... Um, they're usually quite a bit less comprehensive, uh, or, or big than the, uh, Bill of Rights, and they deal with very specific things. And a lot of them are really easy to remember, and then a lot of them are really hard to remember. And so again, kind of like with the Bill of Rights, some of them you'll want to do mnemonic devices where it's easy, and you'll just get them, whereas others, you kind of just have to know. You kind of just have to get it and, uh and understand. So, um, 11 and 12, they're kind of just ones you have to understand. 11 is hard. It's, um, I think the court case was Chisholm v. Georgia. I could be wrong about that though, so don't quote me. Um, but, uh, basically that one says you can't, you as a citizen or a citizen can't sue another state, right? Well, without certain uh, criteria being met. I mean, there are exceptions, but essentially you can't sue in a, a state. Um, and I don't know. Uh, 11 is like a one and a one. So maybe you can say that's a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Only it's you against a whole flipping state. So I don't know if that works, but, um, if you need a mnemonic device for it, try to get it. It's one that I just try to remember. Um, the 12th amendment is another one. Um, this one's kind of easy, and again, you use the numbers. So 12, to get a 12, you put a 1 and a 2 together. And basically, the 12th Amendment says that the president and the vice president are going to run on a single party ticket. They used to run individually, but now they're going to run together. So from 1 to 2, I don't know if that helps. I always remember that because the story is kind of fascinating because... Um, because it didn't used to be like that. And so it used to be that everybody just ran for president and the second place winner became vice president. And so when John Adams won the presidency, his rival, Thomas Jefferson, became his vice president. And then later what happened is Thomas Jefferson won the presidency and Aaron Burr tied. And so they had to figure this out, and Alexander Hamilton had to come up with this whole scheme. Um, anyway, so long story short, they passed the 12th Amendment so that he'd just be the president and the vice president on one party ticket. And you have to think about how weird that would be, by the way. I think, uh, I think it was maybe less weird back in 1796 when uh, Adams wins, because, I don't know, I mean, Adams and Jefferson, they were from different political parties and all of that, and that's weird. Think about how weird that would be if, uh, think about how weird that would be if in uh, 2016 Donald Trump became the president and Hillary Clinton was the vice president. Or in 2020, if Joe Biden was the president and Donald Trump were the vice president. 
it'd just be weird, right? So I think of the 12th Amendment. You want to, you know, the old one-two punch, right? I don't know. But uh, that one I remember just because of the story. And that gets us into the Reconstruction Amendments. In these ones, I would recommend you uh, learn in uh, as a group. So the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments are the Reconstruction Amendments. And, you know, I don't know a good mnemonic device for them, but they're really super duper important. And that's because they essentially, uh, well, the 13th Amendment frees the slaves, the 14th Amendment guarantees the rights of all Americans and allows the former slaves, excuse me, to be president, or uh, president, to be uh, citizens. And then the 15th Amendment allows former slaves the right to vote. As long as you're a dude. So, um, they're the Reconstruction Amendments, and if you can remember that, right? And if you can remember the slaves, and they go from slaves to free, when the 13, free 13, there we go, free 13 maybe, I don't know, that, that works for you. And then they become citizens in the 14th Amendment, and they, uh, the government is going to actually protect all citizens' rights, which, by the way, that's a flippin' huge deal when it comes to the U.S. Constitution. And then, the 15th Amendment gives them the right to vote. So, learn them as a block. And again, if you know a little bit about Reconstruction and all that, it'll really, really help you. But, uh, that's, that's kind of that. So, learn those as the block. Reconstruction Amendments, Free 13, uh, Protect Citizens' Rights 14, and the 15th Amendment, of course giving black men the right to vote. Is there more to it? Of course, the 14th Amendment is super important, uh, essentially because it's going to incorporate other other amendments, but uh, I don't know, maybe that's a video for another day. And then that gets us into the, uh, gosh, the last ones. So the 16th Amendment, this one's a good mnemonic device, because what do you do when you turn 16? you get your driver's license. When you get your driver's license, you buy your car, and of course, the car itself is an expensive item, and then the gas is super expensive, and then the insurance is expensive, and you gotta put tires on it because you're an idiot driver that's a teenager and you're on a burnout all the time, so you gotta have a job. I wanna go shooting. Anyway, um, so the, um, 16th Amendment, you're going to get a job, right, when you turn 16 to pay for the car and everything. But here's the thing. You're going to do this. I, I did this, and I bet you've done this if you're not 16, or if you're over 16. Um, you're going to you're gonna look at uh, all your hours, and you're going to calculate, you know, your wage, and you're going to say, oh, cool, I'm going to make this much money. And then you get your paycheck, and the government takes out this much money, so you make this much money. And you're going to go, dang it! And you had all these plans that you're going to do with all of your money that you're going to get. And, uh, yeah. Now you're not going to use all that money. So the 16th Amendment allows the federal government to uh, uh, do a graduated income tax. So there you go. When you get an income, you're going to have to deal with income tax. And so that's the 16th Amendment. And you remember that, because when you turn 16, you're going to get a job. And when you get a job, you're going to be subject to income tax. The 17th Amendment, I don't know, just memorize it. You know, it's one of those ones you'll just have to remember. That one is the uh, direct election of U.S. Senators. It's actually something that's kind of a, a victory for us in Nevada because of the Silver Democrats and all of this. But I don't know. You can figure that one out some other time. Um, anyway, so yeah, so direct election of, of uh, U.S. Senators, popular election. Um, of U.S. Senators. Uh, there you go, 17th Amendment. I don't know if if there's a good way to memorize that, but if you find it, put it in the comments and let me know. The 18th Amendment, it's like they planned some of these. So the 18th Amendment is prohibition. And when you turn 18, guess what? You're going to be an adult. You're going to, you know, be your own person in all of this. You can vote now, but what can't you do? We still can't drink. <laughs> so there you go. You can you can fight in wars, and you can uh, you can 
make decisions about who's going to lead the country. Um, but you're still not mature enough, apparently, to uh, decide whether or not you want to drink. So there you go, 18th Amendment, prohibition. Easy, right? Because you're prohibited when you turn 18. And then, the 19th Amendment. This one's a little bit more of a stretch, so bear with me. So when you turn 18, you can vote, but not a whole lot of people actually do vote right when they're 18 because they don't catch the election right. So most people, they'll have to wait till they're 19 to vote. And women had to wait until the 19th Amendment to vote. Well, women in the eastern states. If you're a cool state like uh, Nevada, then women got to vote prior to the 19th Amendment. But uh, not a whole lot prior, so oh well, we're not as cool as some of the other ones. I think Wyoming is the coolest when it comes to women's suffrage. But there you go. Women can vote. Women's suffrage. Please understand that uh, women's suffrage uh, doesn't mean that women are suffering, but it means they can vote. Suffrage means the right to vote, so there you go. Uh, if anybody ever shoves a camera in your face and say, women should stop suffering, we need to uh, end women's suffrage, right? Just uh, shake your head and walk away. It's generally good policy if anybody shoves a camera in your face, ever. Just shake your head and walk away. So there you go, 19th Amendment. Uh, 20th Amendment, again, it's like they planned it, because when is the presidential inauguration? It's on January 20th, right? It is, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, there you go. 20th Amendment changes the uh, president or the inauguration. Actually, changes when Congress meets, too. But uh, pre uh, changes inauguration from March 4th to January 20th. So there you go. 20th Amendment, 20th of January. It's like they, ch they planned it that way so that, you know, my college students could remember the Constitution that much easier. Then... The 21st Amendment, again, it's like they planned it, repeals the 18th Amendment, which means when you turn 21, you're going to go to the bar. And by the way, it's really fun to do this. You'll make the uh, bartender uh, laugh. Go to the bar on your turn 21 and say, hey, it's my 21st birthday. He'll say, cool, let me buy you a drink. Order milk. That's what I did. And then I went to, uh, then I went to, uh, not food connection. Anyway, a grocery store and bought liquor and uh, had a bad time. Anyway, so yeah, order milk. But uh, yeah, when you turn 21, you get to drink and the 21st Amendment repeals prohibition. It's like they planned it. And then the 22nd Amendment, that one's easy because it's 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 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 22, two term, two term limit. And there you go. Uh, so if you can remember two term, 22, 2-2, two, two. that's easy. Two-term limit. That's a good old FDR amendment, actually. I think the 21st Amendment's kind of uh, because the Democrats won in uh, 1932 as well. But anyway, um, we get a couple of Franklin Roosevelt amendments, and this is one of them, because he famously ran for and won four terms as president. And the nation said, you know, FDR was kind of cool, but do we really want a president to be running for life? as FDR did. I mean, what if some of our other presidents were running for life? We could still have Bill Clinton or, or George W. Bush. Anyway, um, so uh, where was I? We could still have Jimmy Carter. Crap. Anyway, um, so yeah, two-term limit for the president, uh, and there you go. Now, the uh, 23rd Amendment, this one you're going to have to chant. Um, so I always remember it because the 23rd Amendment gives uh, electoral votes to Washington, D.C. So if you think D.C. 23 um, and you imagine a bunch of people marching and saying, we want voting rights, D.C. 23, D.C. 23, votes for Washington, D.C., then you'll get it. And there you go, 23rd Amendment. There's more to it, but that's basically it. Uh, 24th Amendment. Um, Gosh, I don't know, the rest of these, the 24th, 25th, and 26th, and 27th are a little more, uh, a little more difficult. You kind of just have to, I guess, remember them. I don't know if there's a good way really to, uh, really to, 
um, to really get these. Um, the 24th Amendment has to deal with uh, voting rights again, and this one is saying that uh, there's no, uh, you're not allowed to uh, have a poll tax or literacy tests in order to vote. And I don't know, is there a good way to to get that memorized? Maybe. If there is, I don't know it. Chirpitz is having fun. So, there's the 24th. The 25th, this one actually, um, if you live in the United States since 2016, um, has been uh, bandied about quite a bit uh, for both Donald Trump and for uh, Joe Biden. And uh, the 25th Amendment has to do with presidential succession. And so if you remember that, it, uh, it codifies who takes over when the president dies or is incapacitated. This has happened in the past, by the way, with uh, both uh, Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt. These guys got incapacitated. And the question was, well, who's in charge? Where does, uh, where does the succession go? And so this basically nails it down almost to like the nth degree of who gets to be the president if the president dies and then the vice president dies and then so on and so forth, right? So it's presidential succession. The reason why uh, I mentioned Donald Trump and Joe Biden is because in uh, Donald Trump's presidency, there were a bunch of people who's, who were trying to say that, hey, maybe we can uh, remove Trump from office uh, without having to impeach him by using the 25th Amendment to say that he's untrustworthy with national secrets. He's just too uh, volatile a person. And then, of course, with Joe Biden, many people have been saying a similar thing, only that he's he's too old and he's uh, senile and, uh, um, I mean, gets lost and things like that. So, anyway. Um, so, again, that's the 25th Amendment. Presidential succession, right? Um, so, there you go. 26th Amendment... Yeah, how do you memorize the 26th Amendment? I know this is a whole thing about how to memorize the Constitution, but now I'm asking you. Um, So the 26th Amendment is is actually like one of the fastest amendments to ever be passed. So what it does is it allows 18-year-olds to vote. And this is like, um, I guess, a Vietnam Amendment. So I don't know if there's a good uh, something to do with 26 in there somehow, but uh, what it was is, you know, many of these 18-year-olds were getting drafted and shipped off to war in Vietnam, and they weren't allowed to vote. The voting age was 21 in many places, and so they were saying, well, that's not fair. Why should we have to fight in a war that we can't even vote for, um, that we can't even elect our representatives to vote for in that kind of business? And so it uh, was really quick. I think it was like a matter of months from when it was uh, proposed to being ratified. And there you go. Now, if you turn 18, you can vote. Um, But uh, I guess don't put off voting until you're 26, (laughs) like the 26th Amendment. I don't know. And then the 27th Amendment, that's the last amendment. And I don't know if, again, there's a good way to remember this. Um, But it's also the longest one or the one that took the longest to ratify. So the 27th Amendment was actually uh, part of the original Bill of Rights. The original Bill of Rights was supposed to be 12 uh, amendments, but it got cut down to 10. And one of them, one of those that didn't make the cut, was about... uh, What'd you find? Was about uh, congressional pay. And so the idea was that if Congress is going to change its pay, give itself a pay raise, the change won't take effect until the next uh, election cycle. The idea being, you know, you're not going to give yourself a billion dollar pay raise and then, you know, just uh, take your money and run. So there you go. Anyway, that got, I think that got resurrected by some law student in the 1980s or something like this, and it got some traction. And so finally it, uh, it never had an expiration date. So they went ahead and ratified it. So there you go. Um, I don't know if there's an easy way to remember it, but uh, if you can uh, use your mnemonic devices and everything for all the others and then uh, focus your your actual brain juices 
on the ones that are harder to memorize, you should be able to get it. And there you go. Now you know how to memorize the whole U.S. Constitution. Let's look at what a beautiful place it is, because gosh darn it, you should memorize the Constitution. You should know the Constitution, because America is beautiful. All right, what's the song? Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of sand, for brown mountains' majesty above the barren land. Nevada, Nevada, God turned his back on thee and filled you with bugs and lots of shrubs that are very prickly. I'm sorry, that might have been disrespectful. I wish you all joy in your lives. I hope you all remember the Constitution now, and we'll see you later. Derbits! Derbits! Come! Good boy! Good boy, you're a good boy. Go on, go ahead.